All right, guys, this video is going to be on the anti-tie-down circuit. So there are a number of different uh, videos out there. The best ones that I've seen so far um, are this one here. If you go to uh, Engineering Technology Simulation Learning Videos, they have some great videos. And if you look under uh, Two-Handed Controls, you'll find this video. I'll put the link in the, the comment section. It's a great video showing um, the basics on what we're doing here in that the operator at a press has to hit both push buttons in order for the press to come down. And we want to make sure that they can't tie down one of the other push buttons. So it's an anti-tie down circuit. If you want to see the ramifications of not putting in the right circuit, then you can go to the hydraulic press channel or his second channel beyond the press. Great channel, uh, really entertaining. But this one is disgusting. It shows the ramifications of having the press come down on somebody's hand. Okay, so if you're interested in watching the carnage there, you can go to his channel. I'll put the link uh, below as well. So we're looking at uh, the safety control circuit or the anti-tie-down circuit uh, and looking at some forums uh, like this one here from 2002. A gentleman named Alan Case makes a good point. It's a good idea to practice the programming, uh, but if it's real-life applications, the legalities of this circuit are horrendous. Use, use a PILTS type relay, which I'm going to show you in two seconds, uh, and do it to the applicable codes. Otherwise, you, be, you could be calling a 20 stone tattooed man mother for a long time. You're going to jail if you use a PLC in order to do an anti tie down circuit. So, this is a disclaimer you cannot use a PLC in order to do crucial safeties, right? So, something like this with an anti tie down circuit where you need the, the operator to be pressing both push buttons you need to use an anti-tie-down relay. You cannot rely simply on the programming that you've done in the PLC. Okay, so this is just for in the lab, not for out in the field. Okay, so uh, the anti-tie-down means that anti-tie-down, anti-repeat means that the operator must operate both push buttons simultaneously to cycle the machine. The machine should cycle once and once only. The only way the machine will cycle again is if both push buttons are completely released and then both push buttons are simultaneously actuated again. Okay, so um, what I'll do is I'll put a link to this uh, PDF where I found each of these guys, or I'll put the, everything in the, the comment section below. There are a number of different manufacturers that provide those safety relays. So let's bring those guys up right here. So the best one from other comments in uh, different forums is PILZ, P-I-L-Z. So for this guy, we're using this for a two-handed control, and they do all of the safety within this different relay. Okay, so you're using this in addition to uh, your PLC. And you're also going to make use of a light curtain as well, so that if somebody puts their hand into the press and they break that light curtain, there's absolutely no way that that, light, that, that press is going to come down on their hand. So you can get your PhD in safeties, guys. So what we're doing with the PLCs, is just making us an, like t enough that we know enough that we're dangerous, right? After you take a PLC course, you then need to take a safety course as well to implement light curtains, safety relays, all of these good stuff, okay? So PILS makes one. Um, here's an older one from uh, Time Mark. Allied Electronics has one from Banner here, the two-hand uh, safety control module. And then Alan Bradley also makes, there's a number of di different manufacturers that make these safety control relays that you must implement on presses. Okay, the best that we've that I've seen so far from other comments is the PILTS product. All right, guys, so let's take a look at uh, the circuit that we're going to mimic. So we're going to be going over this guy right here, the anti-tie-down circuit. Uh, the place where I got this circuit is from this textbook right here, Programmable Logic Controllers, Programming Methods and Applications by Hackworth and Hackworth Jr. I've seen this on the net where somebody has scanned this entire textbook. Um, that drives me crazy. If you need, if you'd like this textbook, take a look at, uh, take a look at it online and then go purchase it yourself. Don't be a donkey and download the, uh, the scanned versions that are on the net. Unless somebody makes something available, then it's not for you to steal their, their material. All right, guys, so let's take a look at uh, that circuit there. So we're going to take a look at this guy where we have two push buttons, and we're going to make use of the anti-tie-down circuit and that there's going to be a timer and that we need to have half a second in between pushing each of the push buttons. Otherwise, 
if we don't push both of them simultaneously, then there's a chance that we could be putting our hand into the press. Okay, again, is this the best anti tie down circuit out there? I don't know. This is the one that uh, I found, and we're going to make use of it. But again, I, I wouldn't make use of this out in the field. We're going to make use of that anti tie down really. But it's a cool circuit that we can look at using the timers and our XIC and XIO in our in our programming. Okay, so I've got this set up on the Tweedo suite and I've got this in the run mode already. And for simulation, I've got the Easy Veep 2.26 from uh, from Festo. So I've got my PLC hooked up to the Easy Veep and it's providing us with this animation here of the press. All right, sorry for the pause. Just sometimes this is on uh, on mouse and I wanna make use of the keyboard uh, and I wanna make sure that the animation is working. So with this circuit, you can see down here, I'm using the arrow keys, the left and the right arrow keys here. Uh, and by pressing one, then the press does not go down. If I press the other one on the right hand side, this guy right here, the press does not go down. Okay, you can see there that in the circuit there, I've got a timer. The timer is set for 50 milliseconds, so 50 milliseconds. Um, and if I press any of those push buttons, the left or the right, right, so there's my left hand one, uh, and you can see that this is actuated, and the timer times out. As soon as the timer times out, I've got an XIO in line with my other, with the same two push buttons in series, and it blocks that signal going to the press. If I press the other push button, this guy right here, then we should find that this is true. It will set the timer within 50 milliseconds. There we go. And as soon as it sets that output on the timer, then it blocks that logic from getting to my press output. So I have to hit um, this and this push button within 50 milliseconds in order to get the logic to pass all the way through to the press. Once it gets to this output, then I've got a parallel circuit right here that negates the output of the timer there. So as long as I can press each of these guys within 50 milliseconds, then the signal will go through to the press. The holding contact right here will negate this timer output right here because it's always going to go, right? As soon as I press one push button, the timer is going to actuate. If I press the other push button, the timer is going to actuate. So I need something to negate that output of the timer and provide for logic continuity all the way to the press. As soon as I let go of any of the push buttons, then the press should release. Okay, so again, pressing one push button, nothing. Pressing the next push button, nothing. Pressing both of them within 50 milliseconds. Come on, there we go. And the press goes down. Okay, if I release one of the push buttons, then the press should release. Gorgeous. If I repress that push button, then nothing goes down. I have to release both of the push buttons and then hit both of them at the same time for it to go down. Again, on the right hand side, if I let go of that push button, then the press releases. And again, if I press that push button, then nothing happens until I let go of both push buttons. Beautiful. So pressing both of them at the same time and the press goes down. Release them and it comes back. If I press one and then wait for a little bit and then hit the next, nothing happens. Again, one, wait for a little bit, hit the next, nothing happens because that timer times out and it blocks the logic continuity from getting to the output to my press. So I have to hit both of them within 50 milliseconds in order for the press to go down. Beautiful. Let go of any of the push buttons and the press releases. Again, going down. Okay. So it's a pretty cool circuit. Again, we're never going to implement this out in the field, guys. We need a safety control, really. But this is a pretty cool circuit to implement in the lab. And you have to hit both of them within 50 milliseconds in order for the press to go down. So what I want you guys to do is try this circuit out in the lab. And then we're going, you guys are going to add to this. So right now, when I press both push buttons, this, the press goes down, but it doesn't do a full cycle in that it doesn't go straight down and then go back up and do a full cycle in the press. So I want you guys to 
change this circuit once you've got it working and you've shown me. And I want you to have it set so that when I press both push buttons, it does a full cycle, like a one shot. It goes down and back up and waits for us to release and repress those push buttons. So instead of just going down like this, we need it to go down and back up every time that we hit each of those push buttons. And then another thing that we might want to do is we've looked at uh, the opposed sensing sensors with the light curtain. Um, so we can implement a light curtain as well so that if somebody's hand has broken the light curtain, there's absolutely no way that the press can go down. All right, guys, we'll see you on the next video. You can leave your comments below. Don't troll this video, though. I know that it's not used out in the field. We don't need to be repeated. I think I've said that five times in the video. So, uh, but if you have a better circuit, then definitely leave some comments below. All right, Construction, cr constructive criticism, criticism is cool. Trolling is not cool. All right, guys, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for your patience.